Susan. Bill passed his binoculars to Susan as he opened the coffee flask and poured cups for them both. They were in swell wood, 10 miles from home in deepest Somerset. The wood was famous for its nesting heron birds and Susan had wanted to photograph them as she had done last spring. While bird watching they rarely spoke and when they did it was in short whispers so as not to scare off the wildlife. Susan blew in her coffee before sipping it to warm herself up on this cold April morning. She nudged Bill and pointed to her amazement two men in the distance. A big man appeared to be pushing a smaller man. What the hell are these two doing in the reserve? whispered Bill. They're going to frighten off the herons and disturb their feeding habitat, she said, knowing there was no point in whispering now. The bigger man stopped to light a cigarette, and before he took his first drag, the other man bolted, disappearing out of view, now being pursued. Within 20 or 30 seconds, the sound of gunshots were causing all sorts of birds to flee the forest. That was close by. Could it have been those two? Bill asked. He threw the contents of his coffee cup onto the undergrowth as he stood up. Susan put her hand on his hip. <laughs> You're going nowhere. What if there's a madman on the loose? A couple of minutes later, the sound of car wheels spinning on the gravel broke the silence. One, or both of them are gone. Come on, let's see what they were looking for. Bill whispered again, breathless with adrenaline. We could end up discovering a body. What if there was foul play? He could well have shot the guy he was pushing around, she cautioned. This was the most excitement Bill had felt in months. Not since being out sailing with his friend Joe in the Solent, and he feared they might capsize in the squall they ended up getting caught by. I'm going to take a look, rapidly packing up his camera and slinging his bag over his shoulder. Susan followed suit, and soon they were in the middle of the reserve, fully against their worst judgement, trampling on the undergrowth, looking for evidence. After about a quarter of an hour, they returned to the car park with nothing to show for their hunt. Bill got out his keys and clicked to unlock the door, but the locks didn't pop tried not to let it show to Susan that he neglected to lock the car. As they drove off, Susan turned around, startled by movement in the rear. A man was cowering on the floor. Help! Susan screamed as Bill slammed on the brakes and their SUV slid onto a verge. Help me! I need to escape or he will kill me! The stranger on the floor pleaded. Bill looked around at him and knew he had to act quickly. Okay, we saw that man pushing you. Was it you he was shooting at? His hand was on his phone in case he needed to make an emergency 999 call. My life is in danger. He tried to shoot me. I ran to the car park and found your doors unlocked, so I hid here. Mongoose didn't hang around and drove off. So for now I'm safe. Bill kept driving towards home. I don't like this, Susan hissed at him. What if we're getting ourselves mixed up in something criminal? He patted her hand, trying in vain to reassure her. Look, keep down. We can take you to hide overnight in our place. He said that to the stranger. He was now resting on his elbow. He knew Susan would never have agreed to this. He didn't want to be part of allowing this man to be killed, even if he was up to something. In return, you're going to furnish us with some information before I decide if we can help you out. Turned to Susan to nod that he meant business. Take that and cover yourself with it in the back seat, pointing him to a picnic blanket on the parcel shelf. The man breathed a sigh of relief as he covered himself. Look, I'm no angel. I robbed him. I didn't realise he was Mongoose, the big time criminal. He had a lot of fancy watches and jewellery. When I heard about him, I hid the stuff in the woods. He caught up with me after a git grasped me up. He took me out here to find them. This is the guest room. 
Keep the curtains drawn and don't attract any attention. I'll slip you out at dawn and you can figure out your next move from then. Bill told him, handing him a towel. The bathroom is next door. I have a shotgun, so I'm fairly certain you won't be turning over my house while I'm sleeping. You saved my life, sir. Why would I do that? The stranger looked pained at the idea that he would betray his rescuer. As Bill closed the door softly. Bill awoke with a start. The sound of his dogs barking. It was just gone 3am. He got up, grabbed a shotgun, that he had placed beside his bed that evening, and went to investigate. He never understood how Susan slept so deeply. In his living room he heard the sound of a man breathing heavily. Turning the lights on, his older doorman dog, Riley, had his teeth on the crotch of the mongoose man who was in the forest yesterday. The younger dog, Archie, was growling from a distance. A handgun was on the floor behind him. And he pointed a shotgun at Mongoose. Now you keep still there while I reach over and pick up the phone to call the police. Bill had never been calmer. The armed police came in ten minutes and Mongoose was bundled into a van. We've been trying to get this guy for years, sir. And with a gun in his hand, we'll be able to put him away for a good stretch. Tell me, why had he broken into your home? Must have been mistaken identity, said Bill. Thank you.